Hello, good day to all of you. I hope everyone is uh, doing fine and spending quality time with your families and loved ones. So let us start with your film too. So good day everyone. So this time we are going to discuss the different film holders or uh, we call this usually as the image receptors together with your hangers and clips for manual processing. So basically in manual processing we have the hangers and clips. We also have the cardboard. So cardboard for those uh, those facilities that are using that are not you sorry that are not using the intensifying screens so these are cardboard cassettes and also we have cassettes with intensifying screens so today we are uh, not using any more cardboards except for those very old facilities and i think they are very rare right now since we are in the digital age, so most of us are using either cassette-less, which are your uh, digital radiography, and some may also still may also be using cassettes with intensifying screens for conventional x-rays. And for those manual processing, we have hangers and clips. So for the processing hanger, so it is described as a stainless. So usually they are made of aluminum or stainless metal with clips for clips usually to hang up films when it's subject for processing. So the main purposes of hanger includes uh, providing easy handling for films, especially during processing. Also, it supports the film allows several numbers of films to be processed at the same time or simultaneously so you can do processing with either two three or more films so unlike in the automatic processor so processing can be done one at a time while in Manual processing with the use of hangers in the master tank so you can process several films at the same time. Also, the purpose of hanger is to separate the films on each other when you are doing it simultaneously or at the same time on each other within the different stages to prevent any contact because when they come in contact with each other, they stick and when you pull them up, so it can cause scratches and with the use of hanger you can prevent them from being with contact with each other thus avoiding scratches so there are different types of processing hanger so first we have the sheet film hanger so this is the most common uh, hangers that we are using and we are familiar with in manual processing it's composed of crossbars and a rigid frame with four clips, the two of which are mounted on a bow spring welded to the crossbar and the other two welded on the bottom frame. So I have, I know most of you are familiar with this sheet film hanger and I have also an image on the next slide. So this sheet film hanger has a handle for easy handling when moving the film from one stage of the master tank to the other. It's also made up of different sizes in relation to radiographic films. So the sizes of the radiographic uh, hanger or the sheet film hanger is the same as the size of our radiographic film. So we have a hanger that has a size of 8 by 10 inches. We have 10 by 12, we have 11 by 14, we have 14 by 14 inches, and we have 14 by 17 inches. So, most commonly in a clinical setup, we have five sizes of films, thus, we also have five sizes of hangers as well as we have five sizes of cassettes so 
So this is an example of this is these are sorry these are the examples of hangers. So we have here the bottom part. We have the clips and another clips at sorry at the upper part and another clips at the bottom part. So, another type of hanger is a dental film hanger. So, obviously, for dental films or dental radiographic films. These are also made of stainless, just like sa sheet films, to which the film clips are attached. And another one, we have the whole film hanger used to process 10 millimeters of roll films, especially uh, films that are used in fluorography. So, this is an example of a dental film hanger. So, because they are very small as compared to the films that we are used to, so they are also smaller. So, just take this one. Okay? So, they are made up of stainless metal or aluminum to prevent rust, especially that they are most uh, mostly submerged in different types of chemicals such as our developing and fixing chemicals. So to avoid rust, so they are made of stainless metals or aluminum. So the proper procedure of loading the film or attaching the films in hanger is as follows. So first, you invert the film hanger and attach the left corner of film with the left clip then attach the right corner to the next clip so i must admit that i am not good in drawing but i would like to try so that you will be able to understand it better so we have here a hanger with a handle okay so we have four clips here we have clips here so this is the bottom part and this is the upper part okay so, invert the film hanger and attach the left corner. So, you attach the film here first and then to the right. So, this is the first step. Second step, attach to the right. And then, you reverse the hanger so that the handle will be at the upper portion now. So, since the film is attached at the bottom, so you have to attach next to the left part here. So, this is number three and then to the remaining right clip so this is number four okay so the purpose why is it that you have to invert your hanger first so you have to do this first step it's because so that it will be easy for you later when you are done so this is the last for this is the last step so all you need to do after the fourth step is hold at the handle and submerge it in the master tank for processing because for example if you are going to do it here first so this will be your first step or second step then you reverse it this will be your fourth uh, third step and fourth step so since your hanger is invert inverted so you need to reverse it again on this position that is another step so it can uh, take although a slight of your time but still it is time consuming okay so that is why uh, the purpose of uh, the uh, purpose of this is for you to save time especially when you are uh, going to process several films so another one Film holder is what we call the cassette or the radiographic cassette. It is described as a thin, thin, but it is heavy, light tight, because when it is closed, the, the light will not be able to get inside. Light tight container, slightly larger than the film where it is intended to hold. So as I have mentioned, for example, if we have a 14 by 14 inches of film our cassette must also be 14 by 14 but in order for this film to fit inside the cassette so it should be about uh, slightly larger okay 
So it can be 14 by 14.5 by 14.5 and so on. So I hope you get the idea. So different uh, portions of the cassettes, we have the front part, the back part, then we have the latches, the hinges for lock. We have also the intensifying screen inside as well as the felt gasket. So I will discuss those parts in a while. So the front part first, of course, you are familiar with this. It faces the x-ray tube. So faces the x-ray tube and consists of a sturdy, so strong material or sturdy metal frame onto which is fixed a sheet of either light metal such as aluminum or plastic material. So it can be made of aluminum or plastic material and the critical point being that it must be transparent or the correct term is radiolucent, okay? Translucent or radiolucent. So when we say lucent or transparent, so this means that the x-rays can pass through. So the frame constitutes a shallow container. So this is the container inside, shallow container, into which can be placed thin intensifying screens, the white portions here, and a film. The front is made of low atomic number, such as plastic or carbon. So low atomic number because, again, it has to be radiolucent. When the material has high atomic number, when the material has high atomic number, so it can be radiopaque. So meaning it will absorb radiation. And we don't need that with our front part of the cassette. Again, the front part of the cassette must be radiolucent or transparent to x-rays. So, it is, it is usually made of carbon or specifically carbon fiber and other plastic materials. So, the front part, it must be rigid or strong and durable, but although it is strong, rigid, or durable, it should be, again, radiolucent, made up of low atomic number materials. So, that it will not attenuate or absorb radiation. Not, ha, not absorb. So, the, the preferred material for front cover of the cassette is the carbon fiber because this material is sturdy and durable, heat resistant, but at the same time, carbon fiber, although it is strong, it is radiolucent. Okay, so that is the reason why carbon fiber is the preferred material for front part of the cassette. So, I have here an example, the front part of the cassette. So, different uh, brands of cassette have different appearance too. So, some uh, has, a, has a visible lead blockers here for the information of the patient for the lead markers. Okay. The next part is the back part. So, it is made of steel or lightweight material such as magnesium or lead. So if the front part is usually made of carbon fiber and plastic materials, the back part is usually made of magnesium or lead. Another part is the felt gasket. So the purpose of the felt gasket is to ensure a light proof edges of the cassette. So when you close the cassette, so these felt gaskets, as you can see or you can imagine, the black, the black uh, part, which is between the IS and the cassette, is the felt gasket. So this is to ensure a light-proof edges of the cassette. It is also referred to as the compression device to maintain low screen film contact when the cassette is closed and latched. So when we say latch, lock, okay? So it should be lock. So this is the back part, either made up of magnesium or lead. So we can also see here the lead blockers or the marker. 
So, this is the latch for opening and locking. And we have in we have here the back portion also. So in the old types or brands of cassette, so we can see hinges here. So uh, the felt caskets, so these are the black portion here, okay? So this is to make sure that when you close the cassette, so a uh, light cannot enter the cassette and not pre-exposed our films. So there are also some cassette problems that we encounter which can greatly affect the quality of the radiograph that we obtain. So some cassette problems include bent or warped cassette. So this can happen when it when the cassettes are mishandled and because of that it can be bent or warped. So therefore uh, causing an even screen film contact inside the cassette which will also produce an even optical density in a radiograph. So it is important that we maintain even film screen contact or the same or uniform contact between the film and the screen. So also there are some cassettes that uh, has light leaks or even if you close it properly so still lights can enter and can pre-expose our film. So we can also affect the density of our radiograph. Non-standardization, this means that the brands of the cassettes used in the department are of different types. So we have, for example, 8x10 for, for Kodak, we have CareStream for 10x12, we have uh, Fuji for 14x17. So because of this non-standardization, the quality of the radiographic film will also be affected. Okay? So next is the air trapping. So, although our cassette is in good condition, it can still present air trapping problems. So, uh, this happens when you immediately or suddenly close the cassette after you load the film. So, you have to, to wait for about 15 milliseconds, which is a very, very short time, in order for the air inside the cassette to escape okay so you have to let the air inside to escape because if the airs if the airs if the air is trapped inside the cassette it can cause an artifact okay so it will look like an air bubble or air rings in your radiograph which can uh, lead to misdiagnosis of patient later also because of either being bent or warped so there will be a poor screen film contact so, so poor screen film contact again will result to uneven optical density in the radiograph so when your cassettes are bent or warped it should be replaced or repaired if it can be repaired when light leaks so you have to make sure that your felt gaskets are in good condition then also maintain uh, as much as possible the same or similar brands for uh, different sizes of your cassettes and also check for poor screen film contact do the wire mesh test so again to check for the screen film contact so the test done should be wire mesh test. Okay, so wire. So, so that's uh, that's all for cassette problems. Another another part of the cassette which is also very important is the intensifying screen. So the intensifying screen is used 
sorry, used in radiography to enhance the effects of radiation to enhance or to multiply, to maximize, to intensify the effects of radiation in producing film blackening and to increase contrast. It is also part of the cassette that converts x-rays into visible light. So, the main, as I have been mentioning to you, the main purpose of the intensifying screen is to convert x-rays into visible light. It is a device or a material found in the cassette that contains phosphors that convert x-rays into visible light which then exposes the radiographic film. So, just like what we have mentioned in our previous uh, lessons, so the intensifying screen converts x-rays into visible light. But actually, it is the phosphor, it is the phosphor found in the intensifying screen that converts x-rays into visible light. And then the visible light will be the one responsible for exposing our radiographic film. So, advantages of using intensifying screen. With the use of screen, it can absorb as much as 20 to 40 times more x-rays as compared to film alone. So, meaning, if you don't use IS, so you have to use high technique factors in order to expose the film. But when you use IS, so it can absorb 20 to 40 times more x-rays or visible light. So therefore, you don't need to use high technique factor. Instead, you can use low technique factor in order to lower also the patient dose. So by the use of IS, one x-ray photon can cause the emission of about 1,500 light photons. So, for instance, you have one x-ray, sorry, you have one x-ray absorbed by the phosphor of the intensifying screen and this one x-ray photon will be converted into 1,500 light photons. Okay, so it multiplies X-ray into visible light. And as you all know, as, and as I have mentioned before, so our radiographic film is sensitive to both X-rays and visible light. The same optical density can be achieved with smaller exposures because, again, it will be intensified, it will be converted from one X-ray, it will be converted into 1,500 light photons. So, there is a reduction factor of 30 to 300. So, never mind with that. The, the essence here is that you don't need to use high technique factor in order to obtain maximum or acceptable optical density. With the use of intensifying screen, we can use lower technique factor but still, we can obtain the same acceptable optical density, okay? So, the phosphors, as I mentioned, is the most important part and the active part of the intensifying screen. It is a chemical compound that emits visible light when struck by, sorry, this should be here, when struck by radiation, okay? So, when phosphors are struck, or absorbs x-rays, it will convert x-rays into visible light. The purpose of IS is to decrease the patient's dose, as what I have discussed a while ago, as compared to using an IR or a cardboard cassette without IS, such as indirect exposure radiography. So, question. In what way does the IS reduce patient dose? So, how it can reduce patient dose? So, actually, I have mentioned this. I have discussed this a while ago. So, let's recap. So, the film is placed inside a light tight cardboard holder, then used as image receptor, just like indirect exposure. So, in this case here, this first scenario, there is no intensifying screen. So, we just used an image receptor or a light-tight cardboard holder 
to expose the patient. Then, the addition of IS allows the rad tech to use significantly less MAS compared to the first scenario here without intensifying screen. So when we use less MAS, it also decreases the patient dose because less MAS means less number of x-rays. So less number of x-rays is also equivalent to low patient dose. Okay, so less MAS decreases the patient dose and also allows shorter exposure time. But still, we can have that acceptable or optimal optical density. Okay? So another term that we must understand is the term luminescence. So the intensifying screen operates by a process known as luminescence. So when we say luminescence, it is the emission or the production of light from the IS when it is struck or stimulated or it interacts with X-rays or radiation. So, meaning when we say luminescence, it is the emission of light when the IS is struck by radiation. Okay, so when the IS is bombarded or when the IS absorbs radiation, so it emits light. So that process is called luminescence. So luminescence is a process. So there are two ways that an IS may luminesce. There are two ways that the IS will emit light. So these two ways are called fluorescence and phosphorescence. So when we say phosph uh, when we say fluorescence, it refers to the ability of the phosphors in the IS to emit visible light only only while exposed to x-rays and after being exposed to x-rays there is no light emitted anymore okay while phosphorescence this occurs when the phosphors continue continue to emit light after exposure has stopped okay so the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence is that fluorescence it only emits light when it is struck or exposed to radiation. So, meaning fluorescence emits light during exposure, while phosphorescence emits light after exposure. Okay? So, again, fluorescence emits light, emits light during exposure only and after exposure there is no light emission anymore but with phosphorescence it emits light even after exposure okay so other term for phosphorescence is screen lag or after glow so luminescence includes fluorescence and phosphorescence Fluorescence, okay? Luminescence is the emission of light when struck by radiation. Fluorescence is the emission of light during or only while exposed to x-rays. Phosphorescence is after, okay? So I hope that is clear now. So for screen construction, so, these are the layers of the intensifying screen. So, if our cassette has parts, so front, back, felt gaskets, hinges, latch. If our radiographic film has emulsion, base, protective coating, supercoat, anti-halation layer, overcoat, our intensifying screen has also different layers. So first, we have here the protective layer. This is the outermost, outermost layer and found closest to film. So take note of that. So this is the outermost layer and it is closest to film. So the white portion that you see when you open the cassette is the protective layer. It's made of plastic 
and from the word itself protect protects the fragile phosphor material beneath it so the purpose of protective layer is to protect the sensitive the fragile phosphors which is after the protective layer also it can prevent static electricity also allows cleaning the is safely without abrasions without causing damage to the phosphor and again to provide physical protection the next layer after the phosphor the protective layer is the phosphor layer so sometimes phosphor layer is also referred to as the active layer phosphor layer is the most important screen component or layer because again it contains the phosphor material so the phosphor material emits visible light when struck by x-rays or radiation so phosphor materials can either be calcium tungstate screen or rare earth screens So we have here, for example, we have here the film. So film, we have here, the portion here is the cassette. So protective coating is the is farthest, the outermost, this one, the outermost, and it is closest to the film. After the protective layer, we have here the phosphor layer the most important layer of intensifying screen so the purpose of the protective layer is to protect the phosphor beneath it or next to it so these are the approximate width of the or measurement of the different layers of intensifying screen the next part is the reflecting layer or the absorbing layer. So, reflecting layer or reflective layer is not the same as absorbing layer, okay? So, an intensifying screen can either have reflecting layer or absorbing layer. So, it depends on how it is constructed. But, take note. Intensifying screen cannot have both, okay? So, it cannot have both. So, either, la, either reflecting or absorbing layer. So, again, it depends on how the IS is being manufactured, but take note, it can never contain both reflecting or absorbing layer. So, reflecting layer is the most common compared to absorbing layer. This consists of either magnesium oxide or titanium oxide. Okay, so reflecting layer is made up of magnesium oxide or titanium oxide. The purpose is, from the word itself, to reflect all the light emitted by the phosphors toward the film. Okay, so it reflects the light towards the film. It also ensures that all the light emitted reaches the film. Okay? While if some of the types of IS use absorbing layer instead of reflecting, so it is generally consists of a light absorbing dye. So this is used to absorb the light directed toward it by the phosphor layer. So some of the IS uses uh, or use absorbing layer to slow down to slow down the speed of the IS so if you want to increase the speed you use reflecting layer so reflecting layer increase the speed while when you use absorbing layer it decreases or slows down the speed so, reflecting layer sees to it that all the light emitted will reach the film, while absorbing layer sees to it that some of the light directed towards it is being absorbed and not reach the film.
Okay? So, if you want to increase, so reflecting layer. If you want to decrease or slow down the speed, you have to use absorbing layer. And you cannot interchange it because it is already embedded in the IS during manufacturing. So, you just uh, inform your manufacturer if you want your IS to have reflecting or absorbing layer. So, we have here this portion here, the blue, the light blue, sorry. The right blue portion there, I cannot come back to, I cannot return to the previous slide, but I have another slide there with the, the same picture. I will discuss it later. So the last portion is the base. It is the bottom layer of the IS and farthest from the film, but nearest the cassette. So, what is close to the film is the protective layer, the white portion that you see when you open your cassette. So, while the base is farthest from the film, near the cassette, okay? So, the purpose of base to provide support and structural stability made of polyester cardboard and the base should be flexible and chemically stable to provide support and stability for the phosphor layer, just like our protective layer. So, as I have mentioned earlier, so this portion here is the reflective layer. So, this is the reflective layer. When the phosphor so, this is the cassette portion. So, base is near the cassette, far from the film. So, we have here the film. So, base is near the cassette, far from the film. Provides also a rigid structure for the phosphor, just like uh, the base of our emulsion. I'm uh, sorry, the base of our radiographic film, which also provides a rigid structure for our emulsion. The base here in the intensifying screen also provides a rigid structure or support for the phosphor. So, the reflective layer here. Once the phosphor is struck, so we have here the radiation going to the phosphor. When the radiation interacts with the phosphor material, so it will convert x-rays into visible light. So not all the lights will go in a forward direction. There will be some light that will go in this direction. So, the purpose of this reflective layer is to make sure that this light here will be reflected back to the film. Okay? So, it will increase the sensitivity of our radiographic film because of the increased number of visible light interacting it or exposing it. But for instance... If we use absorbing layer here, so if we use absorbing layer instead of reflective layer, so the light coming here will not be reflected back to the film. Instead, it will be absorbed by the absorbing layer. So it does not affect the sensitivity of the film to the light because there is no additional visible light that comes here because they are being absorbed by the absorbing layer, okay? So again, x-rays will pass through from the patient, then we have the cassette, then it will pass through the base, the reflective layer, then the, the phosphor. The phosphor will convert x-rays into visible light passing through the protective coating going to the film. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So again, protective coating is near the film, farthest from the cassette. While the base is near the cassette and farthest from the film. So, the same just like what I have discussed uh, a while ago. So we have here the cassette. Then after the cassette portion here, 
we have the intensifying screen. So this is the front part of the cassette, so made of plastic or carbon fiber. Then we have here the pressure pad, or we call it the felt gasket. So felt gasket. Then after the pressure pad or the felt gasket, we have here the intensifying screen. So the first part is the base. So we have here the base. Then after the base, we have the reflective layer. Then we have here the phosphor layer. Then the phosphor layer will convert x-rays into light going to our film. So from the film, it will be going from the base going to the emulsion. Okay. So on the back part of the cassette, we also have here plastic back or it is made up of magnesium or lead. So PB. So either magnesium or lead, the back part of the cassette. Then we have pressure pad or the felt gasket. Then another IS here. So as you, if you have noticed, we have uh, a pair of IS in our cassette. So we have here again the base, reflector, then the phosphor layer, and the protective layer in this portion. Okay. So we have different types of phosphors. We have the calcium tungstate phosphor and the rare earth phosphors. So sometimes we call it the calcium tungstate screen, the IS. Then we have the rare earth screens, which uses the rare earth phosphors. Rare earth elements, they are relatively difficult and expensive. That is why they are called rare earth. So, difficult and expensive to extract from the earth or to retrieve from the earth. According to research, rare earth screens or rare earth phosphors, I mean, absorbs more x-rays. They absorb more x-rays, the rare earth elements, and therefore converts x-rays to visible light more efficiently. Because they absorb more x-rays, there will be more visible light thus resulting to an improved recorded detail in the radiograph as compared with a calcium tungstate phosphor. So this simply means that rare earth phosphors are better than calcium tungstate phosphors. Also, when, when we increase the thickness of the phosphor layer, it will likewise increase the speed of the IS. When we increase the speed of the IS, it will also increase our optical density, provided that all other technique factors remain the same. Okay? So these are the different phosphor materials as well as their spectral em emission or the color of light emitted by the IS phosphor. So, we have here the calcium tungstate, which emits blue light. Rare earth elements can either be lanthanum oxybromide, yttrium tantalate, or gadolinium oxysulfide. Lanthanum oxybromide also emits blue light, just like CTS, but it is better, more efficient. Yttrium tantalate emits ultraviolet and blue light, while gadolinium oxysulfide emits green light. So other phosphor materials which are not common are barium lead sulfide and barium strontium sulfate, which emit, emit uh, both blue light. So as for the screen speed, the capability of a screen to produce visible light with a faster screen producing more light than a slower screen. So when we say screen speed, it means it is the ability or the capability of the IS to produce visible light faster. Producing more light as compared to a slower screen, which uh, given the same exposure factors. Screen speed can be identified in two ways, 
So the speed of the IS can be in, can be identified or described by first intensification factor which uh, will be discussed on the succeeding slides and another one is the relative screen speed. So the intensification factor and the relative screen speed can describe the speed of an IS. In general, the conversion efficiency for CTS or calcium tungstate screen is about 5%, while rare earth screens is about 20%. So when we say conversion efficiency, this is the efficiency of the screen to convert X-rays into light. So 5% for CTS, so this means that only 5% of X-rays are converted into visible light or 5% of light are being produced. And for rare earth screens, it is about 20%. So this means that rare earth screens are better or are most efficient as compared to the calcium tungstate screen. So we have here detailed screen. So number of X-ray beam absorbed is about 2 to 5. So I have mentioned earlier that uh, Normally, or in general, 1% of X-ray is converted in, or 1 X-ray or 1 photon is converted into 1,500 visible light. So, if you want a detailed image in the radiograph, so we have here 2 to 5% of X-ray being absorbed. Medium speed, so this is a slow speed. Medium speed is about 20%, high speed absorbs about 40% of X-rays, and rare earth screens absorb about 40 to 60% of X-rays. Again, the higher the X-ray, the higher the percentage of the X-rays absorbed, the higher the number of visible light being uh, produced. And the higher the number of visible light the greater the increase in the optical density so greater optical density so if you want your if you want your image to have a very good detail we use a slow speed so that we call that the detail speed but if we are in a hurry due to uh, emergency cases, emergency examinations, or fast examinations, and results are needed, so we have to use rare earth screens. Another factor that uh, affects the speed of the IS is the KVP. When you increase the KVP, it will also increase the intensification factor. Therefore, when you increase the intensification factor, this will also increase the IS speed. So the intensification factor will be discussed on the next slide. So before that, high speed screens results to poor resolution as I have mentioned. And if you want to have a better resolution or detail, we use a slow speed. Okay, so slow speed for better resolution or better detail so high speed screens are used for the following cases to reduce patient dose which is important for especially pelvimetry examinations when we expose the gonads of the patient in mobile or bedside radiography where kvp and mas are limited so uh, it is recommended to use high speed screens when using also grid cassettes to in, due to the increase of KVP for penetration. We use also high speed screen when using high KVP radiography, PEDJA radiography to reduce motion, especially with our patients who are restless. Spot film radiography to decrease motion and sharpness. While slow speed screens are used to provide as I mentioned here, better resolution or better detail. 
So, slow speed screens are used for bony radiography or bone radiography as well as for magnification techniques. So, to increase or decrease the IS speed, so if you want to make your speed faster or the IS speed faster, increase the thickness. So, increase thickness of the phosphor layer as well as the thickness or the size of the phosphor layer. This is crystal, sorry, crystal. Also, when you want to make it faster, use phosphor with high conversion efficiency. But if you want to slow it down, as I have mentioned earlier, you use absorbing layer or light absorbing dye. Instead of using reflecting layer, so use light absorbing dye or absorbing layer to slow down the speed of the IS. So for sensitivity, so for example, if the speed of the IS is 12, so slow speed, uh, that is a slow speed, so it is sensitive, uh, sensitive to about 10 millirentgen of X-rays. But if the speed of your IS for fast speed or high speed is 1,200, there is no unit for speed, it is sensitive to as little as 0.1 MR. So the essence of this is that the higher the speed, the more sensitive it is to radiation. The lower the speed, the less sensitive it is to radiation. It takes about 10 millirentgen in order for it to, to function or to convert x-rays into light. Again, the higher the speed, the more sensitive it is to radiation. The lower the speed, the less sensitive it is to radiation. So, in our next topic, we will discuss the intensification factors, the relative speed, as well as the quantum model. So, until here for now, and please study. So, I will announce again for another quiz, maybe on uh, Friday, for the quiz in our uh, RT2. This is RT210. Okay, so thank you and good day.